We want to talk now about the politics of the day and talk about the plays for the presidency. And Alan Kelly, as usual, joins us on a Friday. He's the CEO and founder of the Playmaker System, an adjunct professor at the George Washington University and also author of The Elements of Influence. And we've talked about this before, but let me give you in the outset the address you can use. Uh, first of all, he tweets also at Playmaker Alan, or you can go to Facebook, and you can also go to www.plays2run.com. That is P-L-A-Y-S, the numeral 2, run.com. Alan, thanks for being in the studio as always. Appreciate you being here. Good morning, Tim. i uh, looking at the plays this week. I want to take us back to uh, something that President Obama was talking about. We were just chatting a little before with Adam Belmar about this whole UAW address that the president gave, and I'm going to let people listen and get your take on this. You know why I knew this rescue would succeed? You want to know? <laughs> it wasn't because of anything the government did. It wasn't just because of anything management did. It was because I believed in you. I placed my bet on the American worker. And I'll make that bet any day of the week. Yeah. Raucous crowd for the president this week. And Alan Kelly, I know you're giving away donuts, and I can't take one of them because I'm not sitting there. But give us a <laughs> sense. So what kind of a play is this, and what kind of a, a trivia quiz contest are you working here? Well, we thought we've, you know, we've, we've got a half dozen of these segments under our belt uh, this morning, so we'd see if uh, the listeners are learning. So I thought, gee, what a perfect morning to have Tim Farley come on down and, uh, and you know, see what you're picking up here. Okay. Uh, it's a great clip. And, of course, ironic, well, not ironically, he's, he's giving that speech on the same day as the Michigan primary and, uh, and obviously a speech on topics that are very close to the heart uh, and minds and wallets of uh, Michigan constituents. So, uh, you know, as they say, there's no such thing as coincidence in politics. So uh, I'm going to ask you, uh, Tim, I'm going to give you a choice. Uh, is he running A, a lantern, B, a jam, or three, a preempt? Now, if you're at home and not in your car, you can follow this at playstorun.com and see our table or go to the Place for the Presidency uh, blog where we're posting this, uh, this little competition here. So. Okay. Lantern, jam, or preempt? Well, I mean, it sounds like something you, you're preempting what other people are doing. You're trying to get out in front of the game, I would think. That's right. Eh, correct. Uh, he, and donut. This, and this, uh, donut. And this is one of the things that uh, we've talked about in the past that uh, where uh, Obama is particularly adept. He's got a real, he or his strategists have a real keen eye for uh, what to grab and when to grab it and how to grab it in a way that takes, uh, that takes the oxygen, uh, you know, out and away from the particular argument that the rivals want to be talking about. So by going and talking to UAW unionists, core constituents about cars, about jobs, uh, uh, related to Michigan on the Michigan primary day is a real nice bit of, uh, of scooping. And as you say, it's hard to believe there was actually some campaigning taking I'm place. I'm shocked, shocked to find that gambling is going on in <laughs> But uh, I wanted to ask you that question. I thought long ago, and maybe it's changed a little bit, but it seems to me that there are times when the president too often goes to the straw man, the sort of some say argument, because he often presents a balance to what he's trying to push. And, and it seems to me that maybe inadvertently weakens his argument by presenting the attacks on it. How, how does that work? How do you maintain that kind of balance? I'm not sure I know what you mean. Well, for example, if you say some say, I mean, he comes up with an argument occasionally when he makes a point. He said, now, some will say this is a bad idea for America. Well, yeah. nobody's even said that yet. So why are you even bringing up the possibility that somebody's going to attack it? Well, it's also an extension of the preempt. He is trying to inject a hypothetical to create a premise that he can then argue on. Uh, you know, oftentimes uh, candidates will have surrogates do this for them. Uh, you know, I think we saw, um, we saw this happen with... Uh, Back in, uh, well, it's, it's happened to, they, they've had first ladies, you know, pose premises. They've had people ask questions so they can say, well, that's an excellent question to ask. In this case, he did it for himself, but allows him to continue to drive his micro agenda for that day to scoop um, scoop the news, to scoop the press, to scoop the, uh, the cycles, to continue to be in front of rather than be behind uh, the, the, the topics of jobs and cars and Michigan voters. Okay, the classic preempt. Let's move along in the quiz so we can see if we can win more donuts with Alan Kelly. And uh, <laughs> let's talk about Mitt Romney, who obviously had the win in Michigan, kind of close, but one of the things he said in victory. We didn't win by a lot, but we won by enough, and that's all that counts. That was, I think, the headline around the country, Alan. It was. So with a, a narrow Michigan win, 
Uh, this week, Mitt Romney breathed a sigh of relief and rare realism or authenticity. That's what people are talking about a lot lately. He said he said that quote, and it was a concession. So uh, for two for two Greenfield Donuts, uh, Tim, what is it? Was it a recast of Fiat, your favorite, I know, or the one you're also fond of, uh, the disco? Well, I love disco. I, well, I actually hate disco. But <laughs> Fiat, I thought it would be funny yeah, that you put it in there with the automotive, but I'm guessing it's the disco. It is. And why is it the disco? Do you know it? Do you know why we call it the disco? <clears throat> well, it's got a big mirror ball that's uh, <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. No, you get, you're you're stepping around, right? You're you're doing a little dance there. We are, and it's not mean we. It's not that we purposely go out and name uh, give goofy names uh, to to particular influence stratagems, but 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 this is a term that is found in the NTC Dictionary of Debate. Uh, and it perfectly describes what's happening. Where uh, it, it and the the, coin, the term was coined in in the disco era when uh, a champion debater was making his point, but having to backtrack, and they all uh, tittered at him. And they, they forever then it was called the disco. So that's why we name it that. But it's the idea that you have made uh, you're, you've got a flaw in your argument, a flaw in your premise, and uh, without having to, to to forsake everything else you have asserted. Uh, you're throwing one element of it under the bus. So in a sense, you're, you're, uh, you're looking uh, to get yourself out of the perceptual doghouse by taking a step back, thus to buy some credibility, to take, to take steps forward, in other words, to move on. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And it's yeah. a win. And it was a win. So he so he's running a disco. And for Mitt Romney, that's a little bit unusual. This is not a guy who does like to backtrack. He doesn't have the, the sort of the uh, the rhetorical or the social savvy of, of Obama to do that. But in this case, he had to. Otherwise, he would be perceived as uh, as trying to claim uh, more of the victory than anybody would allow him to. You know, you brought up a good point there because one of the things about what you've put together here, Alan, of course, for people who don't know the plays to run the playmaker systems is that this is a way that you can look at the tactics, the strategies that are utilized by candidates. Some of them can't do some of these plays very well. No. You know, when you mention Mitt Romney, his skills compared to President Obama in running certain plays is certainly something that and I guess that would mean that he would run other plays more often or would he just try not to run these plays or do you run them poorly? I mean, where, uh, is that part of the game? We could talk all day about this. This system was rooted in Silicon Valley where I worked for a good number of years uh, through my career. And, you know, you can we talked about this, that there are some who are, who understand this naturally. Steve Jobs clearly was fluid at, at what I call running plays. So is my former client, Larry Ellison. Mm-hmm. They had a sense for it, like a musician does for a piano or any other sort of uh, someone who has a natural talent. Um, you know, you look at Ron Paul, I think this is, I think Ron Paul would be so much farther ahead, and frankly, so would, so would Romney, if they had a better sense for argumentation. And I don't mean confrontational argumentation. You're not talking argumentative. You're yes. talking about the ability to frame a conversation in the That's way you right. want to to That's your right. advantage. Well, yeah, there's. we know from our system that there are 24 actual stratagems that speak to the ways in which people do that. Uh, so, But it's clear that, that Ron Paul only probably uses or knows three or four. And you compare that to someone like I don't know, a Bill Clinton, and he knows about 23 and uses a broad span of them. That's a, that is a huge uh, advantage to the politician who's trying to advance or defend an agenda. Hmm. Once again, Alan Kelly with us. Well, let's, let's turn to Rick Santorum because there were a couple of comments he made this week that made a lot of the headlines, and we've talked about them a little bit. One having to do with the president and college education. President Obama once said, said he wants everybody in America to go to college. What a snob. <laughs> there are good, decent men and women who go out and work hard every day and put their skills to test that aren't taught by some liberal college professor and trying to indoctrinate them. Then this week, he was also on uh, ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos discussing some comments he had made re- referencing the JFK religion speech that was given in 1960 in front of the Houston Ministerial Association. Rick Santorum on ABC on Sunday. 
Well, yeah, well, absolutely, to say that people of faith have no role in the public square, you bet that makes you throw up. What kind of country do we live in that says only people of non-faith can come in the public square and make their case? That was uh, talking about the throw-up commentary, and I think he might have been a little off-target when he comes to the interpretation of the speech, but the point is not so much whether he's right or wrong. It's the kind. It's the idea that he gave those comments. So, so Alan, what's the question here? No, the question is, I, I have three questions. What play was it? A call-out? A label or a screen? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how I would call it. You know, I mean, when you call someone a snob, that sounds like a call out. I'm not sure what the JFK one was, though. Right. Well, uh, my, my judgment here is that both plays were call out. Okay. Uh, and, and I think like that's self evident, what, what, you know, what that is. Uh, I think the problem is that, uh, that, that they were so ill placed. Um, that it sort of ended up uh, whipping back uh, on Centorum. He looked more like, you know, an idiot, I think, according to, to many people, uh, than someone who was making a reasonable point. Um, in, each, in each case, he, he was, you could say there was a screen involved. A screen is when you're trying to stand next to something, some symbol or idea that enlarges or enhances your particular point of view or position. So there's some screening going on, too, and so it's a bit of a trick question. Um, but I think at the end of the day, what he was trying to do was to get on the offense uh, whether or not he intended to really be pushing a social agenda, I'm not sure anybody really knows. But the play that he intended to run, in fact, yeah, it was a call out, and it's and very dangerous because it's very, very much to, to 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 one side of this particular spectrum. It's in the class of attacking plays, uh, which is if you're going to do that, you better know what you're going to do because you're going to get a reaction. And I think you've made one of the most important points here is that he's getting into social issues. Now, the idea of snobbery is one that maybe you could make sell to some of the core Republican uh, voters, because what you're saying here is that, look, the, for the president of the United States, it's not good enough for you to go to tech school, which was a misstatement of the president's view, but it, again, might play better. But certainly the idea of religion and how that plays, it became all about that instead of an economic message, which is one of the great criticisms of this campaign and how it devolved, if you will, heading into Michigan. And maybe it's going to be recovering by the time Tuesday rolls around i'm not sure so what's the score on donuts alan well i think you got three i think Did you I? got you got a bunch of donuts here if we could just get you back uh, pam and jared are gonna eat the rest and i had then okay. i already been depleted just by the guard patrick staff Farise because you know patrick has a problem because he'll eat them all <laughs> in like three seconds so. dimes to donuts uh they're exhausted out there on the hustings <laughs> and there's gonna there's gonna be more uh there'll be many more plays there'll be many more misplays uh we're gonna be able to start to talk not just about plays of note but infamous plays uh uh, that the don't work, it shouldn't have been run. And uh, it, it's not just Centorum. It'll be others who'll do this, and Obama is not immune either. Just watch. Mm -hmm. And there's other candidates and other races, too. It's not just about the presidency, even though that's what we talk a lot about. But remember, people are running for other offices, and a lot of these apply, too. Go to www.plays to run. That is P-L-A-Y-S, the numeral 2 run.com. Alan, always great, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.